Hi everybody, it's Saturday morning and I'm up early so I can tell you guys about type 1 and type 2 errors. I'm sure you're just thrilled about that. So this is just going to be a repeat of what we did in class, but this time you you can stop it, you can rewind it, you can listen to it again and uh, hopefully help you uh, with any misunderstandings you might have about what type 1 and type 2 errors are about. So let's start with type 1 error. Okay, What we have here is the null hypothesis and you can see that by looking right here you see where it says m0 that means mu naught so mu naught is equal to 25 and that is the null hypothesis that we're using for today <coughs> since we assume that the null hypothesis is the truth the distribution of the sample mean looks like this normal curve right here notice how it's centered on 25 okay when we look at the normal curve we're going to have to figure out what the critical value is. So what I'm doing is assuming a left tail test. So mu is equal to 25 for the null hypothesis. And for the alternate hypothesis, mu is less than 25. So here's our left tail test. Okay? If we're doing a left tail test, it means the critical value is going to be on the left side of the distribution. All right, so our rejection region is going to be over here. And the area of this rejection region is going to be alpha, our significance level. Okay, so if you're looking at a type 1 error, okay, a type 1 error is the probability that will reject HO if HO is the truth. If this really is the truth and the mean really is 25 of the population, then this distribution really is the distribution of the sample mean. Okay, so what's the probability that we're going to reject this as our null, or we're going to reject the null hypothesis? Well, that's the probability that our sample mean, our x bar, is in the rejection region over here. So I probably should have, let me draw that over on this side. What's the probability that x bar is in this rejection region? It's the size of the rejection region, which we already called alpha. So, since we use typically 5% as an alpha, the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it's the truth is 5%. So, the type 1 error is always going to be the value of alpha. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Type 1 error is always the value of alpha, the significance level that you pick for your hypothesis test, because that's the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis if this blue line really is the distribution of x bar, meaning the population mean really is 25. Okay, so now let's talk about the type 2 error. All right, so I'm going to clear this off because it's, it's a little more complicated type 2 errors are. Okay, and what I want to do is bring up a different drawing here. This is the drawing I want now. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit like that so we can see it a little bit better because this, this gets more complicated. All right, here's the problem. In a type 2 error situation, okay, we have the following. Mu is equal to 25. HA mu is less than 25. Okay, in a type 2 error situation, the truth is HA. If the truth is HA, we need to have a value of mu to figure out what the distribution of the sample mean is. And HA doesn't give us a value, it just gives us a range of values. All we know is that mu is less than 25. So in order to figure out a type 2 error probability, we have to set the mean at some value less than 25. Okay, now obviously different values of mu will give us different probabilities of type 2 error. So if a problem were to ever ask you to compute type 2 error, they'd have to give you what they think the alternate, or what they think mu is equal to. Okay? Now, the AP test is not going to ask you to compute these probabilities, which is a good thing. All you really need to know is the relationships between alpha and the type 2 error, which we also call beta, and the sample size of the distribution. We'll, we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Okay, now for the purposes of this example, I'm going to go ahead and set a value of mu. And what I did in class, and what I'll do now is say, all right, let's suppose the 
truth is that mu is equal to 24.7. If mu is equal to 24.7, what that means then is that the true value of mu is right here, which means the true distribution of the sample mean is this gold curve. The blue curve is not the distribution of anything in truth. We only use it in determining the value of the critical value and determining uh, where this falls in relation to the distribution, what we assume is the truth. Okay? Again, when we do a hypothesis test, we assume H0 is the truth, and we compute our critical value right here based on that, what best, based on that assumption. If the real truth is that mu is equal to 24.7, the real distribution of x bar is this gold curve here. Okay, so this is the, the curve that we're going to use to base our probabilities on. If the gold curve is the truth, what is the probability of accepting the null hypothesis? Or really, I should say, failing to reject it. Because remember, the probability of a type 2 error is equal to the probability of not rejecting HO when HA is the truth. Okay? Okay, that probability is just going to be right here. This is the probability of that happening. It's all of this area here. Okay? If we don't reject HO, what it means is our sample mean has fallen in this region over here to the right of the, the critical value. The probability of that happening is just the area under the true distribution of x bar from that critical value to the right. So this is the probability of a type 2 error. And we also call this beta, so I'll just write a beta there. Okay, now, the last concept is the power of a test. The power of the test is the probability of making the correct decision when the alternate hypothesis is the truth. Okay? Let me write that down again. Power is equal to the probability, I'll write it this way, of rejecting HO when HA is the truth. Okay? So the power is simply going to be the rest of the area, the other side of this distribution. So that's what we've got here. This area right here is the power. Okay? And basically, the reason why they call this the power and the power of the test, how powerful is it, basically, is because if the null hypothesis is false, if the truth is that the, the true mu is 24.7, how, how uh, reasonable or how um, uh, how likely is our test going to be able to correctly reject the null hypothesis? Okay, that's what the power is. All right, and and the real trick comes in the next step. But I'm going to go to part two because I'm going to run out of time on this video. So here's how the the type two error works. The power works. Let me write here. This is the power. You obviously want tests that have a lot of power. Don't have a lot of type two error. Okay. So let me go ahead and stop this part, and then we'll move on to part two.